have the servo nought. I'm hoping that's how you say it. The LH6FH16, which is the rear light set for the Volvo FH16. It will fit the logger as well as the latest recovery truck. Um, when you're using these, you get the strobing indicator effect because during in the light module, hopefully this will focus, you can see there is two LEDs for the indicator or turn signal. So if I line these up with the rear unit as the instructions show, hopefully you can see you end up with two LEDs in here, which will be the side and brake, I believe. And then you end up with two in this chamber here. One bright one here, which I believe is for the reverse, and then two here. From memory, looking at the diagram, these two here are for the turn, and these two here are for the um, side and brake, or running lights and brake lights, however you wish to call it. And then this here, I could be wrong, it could be the other way around. But we have a look. There's a picture here on the diagram. Um, the, the lights come with two wiring looms, as you can see. These wiring looms are roughly 90 centimeters long, so they should fit both vehicles. As I say, the logger normally uses longer LEDs on the Tamir MFC unit. You don't need resistors with these because they run from 7.2 to 12 volt. So if you're using something like the Beer SFR1, uh, whatever input you put into the unit, i.e. 7.2 racing pack or nickel, my, nickel my hydro pack, that is the voltage you will get out. Um, they come with a diagram, so we need to fit the diffuser. Then we can fit the rear light cluster, because that fits onto here, and the wiring loom exits here. The rear lights that come with the Volvo do have a space at the bottom, so you can possibly run the lights through the bottom, but the bottom is normally where the number plate light would sit. We need to assemble the diffuser lenses here, so they give you a piece of black material here, which is the off cut of this, to go between here to separate. So I don't know if you can see, you end up with a separated diffuser there to this chamber. You end up with this, which then goes over that separator, and this, which then creates the dots underneath the red diffuser. We then have a separate diffused section here, which again is this. So this part here is for the white part, the dot, the black. That part there is for the middle. This is just a clear part to fill that hole. And this is a clear part to fill that hole. So you end up with a separated diffused section, a separated diffuse, two diffused sections there across. Let me get my tweezers, my piece to point around my fat fingers. From here to here, you have a diffuser here, a diffuser here. You mount the original red lens part that comes with Tamiya, but they provide you with a new oval section or diffuser section here. So you can see that this part here has the end part, so it would actually probably be more that way around. So that's the end part as we saw in the diagram. That's the next part. And then you have a clear diffuser then this is the part and as you can see, I don't know if you can see through there, it's in silver. So the silver is on this side and it's on a clear piece of perspex plastic, whatever you wish to call it. And then they are literally laser cut into here and they just sellotaped across the back to keep them all in place. These are the clear diffuser parts, again, which are just laser cut or however they are cut. Looks like they could be laser cut and then just sellotaped across the back of a piece just to keep them all in place. Again, this is the black diffuser. Sorry if I keep moving off the camera. I'm trying to look at the screen whilst recording. And they are the black diffuser parts here. So you end up using this part and getting rid of the, the middle sections and obviously the rest of the plastic around the outside is waste material. You have your diffuser panel here. So this concentrates the LED light just through these holes. 
as you can see they've been punched but they're not completely through so we would just need to give them a little bit of a poke just so that they end up as nice clear holes and they say this is the extra diffuser part that they tell you to cut for here so that's all the parts so the only parts we really need to assemble this are a pair of tweezers because you need to insert that thin piece of plastic some glue so I'm going to use poly cement because I just need to be able to glue the actual LED strips to the back and the diffuser so once it's screwed in place they're really not going to go anywhere so it's really just to hold them as they're located and keep them set there's no load or strain on them as such um, small Phillips screwdriver that purely is just to do up the screws which then cover the rear light lens here so you get some nice clear pictures um, this part is in German but if you do turn it over they give you the parts in English the only downside is you have to keep flipping the paper over to see what the instructions say and, the, and again they give you the wire and diagram in English so they use a common positive or common red which is your anode or the all LEDs is the anode so brown is brake green is parking light dim to light orange reversing lights yellow is indicator as we call it in Europe and the UK or turn signal and the grey are the rear fog lights so you would only need to provide a common positive and a negative 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 for each one of the channels I also have the front light kit which I won't show you here but I do have it available as well which is the new LED light kit which allows you to have the LED tick so let's see what we can do with this as I said, let's see what we can do with it. I took a small pause there just to make sure I had everything laid out on the bench and ready to go. So we will be using this light cluster as shown in the diagram. They are now white instead of black. Maybe they've done that for version or just because of materials there that you can actually, I don't know if you can see that on there, there is a little tiny yeah, it's not gonna focus unfortunately my light there is a little L here Let's see if I can get it any closer unfortunately my camera's not focusing but there is an L trust me on this little circuit board here and then it's just written server not on the back so we will be using that light cluster there and we'll be using this which is the left because this ends up as the left hand side on the truck once it's mounted on the metal bracket which is here this is for the logger bracket it may be different on the recovery truck so that is the left side because we would end up gluing that part onto there this does actually have two little dimples on here that line up with these two dimples here so we will end up with that so I'll break and all the rest will be in there as I say you don't need to then use the original clear Tamiya part which they get you to put a sticker or transfer on the back to get this same sign of dot effect that comes with this kit so we have our part lined up as in the diagram we need to get the correct one of these out so looking at there is a I think they are pretty much trips the same either side so let's just get these off of here there's a little section just to cut through there which is the part that you took as you keep it on the stencil so A bit like any plastic once you've scored it it should just pop through so hopefully this is the right part let me just have a quick look at the memory yeah, i think there is a little section here on the paper that shows like a little molding mark which is probably where that joining part was on there so they ask you to glue this on to here now it needs to be glued on 
in such a way that it stays straight. All the holes are lined up on this side. So that they all perfectly line up with there. Now some of these holes do look a little rough in places. I might just run a little body of reamer against those and get them all lined up. Now there is plenty of this plastic, there is like a shiny side and a dull side. Now being this is typical Tamiya, most the ABS plastic, but it is like with a chrome or very bright silver coating. You could potentially use liquid weld, uh, plastic weld, sorry, on here and just place this on. Hold it in place with a drop of glue here and drop of glue here and just leave it and it will probably set fine. So I'm just going to go and clean these parts up and stop the video here and um, get my glue ready and whether I'll use plastic weld or my cement. I think the cement should work. I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, I've given the holes a little clean. I literally just got my reamer through here and just very gently just ran that in the hole. I think it just took that burring off of there. I've also checked whilst off camera that this little spot here you can see is that is plastic weld having an effect on the plastic so this is ABS and I also did a small spot on here and you can see that it starts to eat off the silver and then gives you a bond so if you've never used, ever used plastic weld before this is it here and it is basically used to weld plastic to cement any of the following parts to each other which is a combination of styrene butyrate ABS acrylic plexiglass perspex and um, if you ever use this stuff you'll know what I'm on about if you've not used it give it a try it's um, you ever got any Tamiya parts that need joining without creating a load of messy glue lines you want to literally just glue two parts together you can lay them together put a bead there's a wicking motion where the liquid will literally run along the join and you'll end up with two nice cleanly joined parts but because it actually works by melting the plastic so the plastics almost become one it's very handy if you're using it for tamiya body parts and stuff so as per the diagram we are holding the part the way around it shows we're going to put that on here like so now, with plastic work, as I say, it does wick into the holes. You could place a small blob maybe on these circles, which are part of the circle moulding part, which then should line up in between. And you could just do that by a few people use the tweezer method, some people use a brush. Either works. You need a very small amount of this. You can see here it's starting to craze the plastic and soften it. That means that when we place this in, we will have a slightly wet surface to bond to. So we check that that is nicely aligned along this line along the top. Looking through the holes, it looks aligned fine there. So we can then dip this into here, place a drop a plastic weld in the corner, dip it this way, I don't know if you saw that, I'll show you again, if I put this on this little drip on here, it wicks and whips its way across the two lanes of plastic. Now it also works quite well to apply a little bit of pressure, I'm just going to leave this in a minute and turn it over check it from the other side check those holes are all nicely lined up and clear so now we have this we can flip it this way and I shall see if I can show you that wicking action again if I put a little drip here just trying to see in the camera it will wick its way along the part I don't know if you saw that it whipped across now you can tell it's having an action on these parts because if I was to touch these parts here, you can see it's actually starting to melt the plastic. There's some on the end of my tweezers there, and it just wipes off. And if you get it while it's wet, it wipes off fine. So that's that part there. Let's just put this stuff on plastic weld. 
do not let this stuff fall over on your bench it will take the paint off most things which is why there's paint missing on this cutting board that I have here and okay so the next step is we could leave this to dry for a while but as I say there's no real tension or motion it is literally to hold this parts in place we can align the circuit board as shown now in the diagram they say to run the cables out the middle axis so let's just give them a little pinch here keep your pressure on the circuit board with the other hand so you don't put any adverse stress on the LED cables place them on there and as you can see in the diagram we need to get them to go around this little lump down here and out through these two here because those are the screw holes that the cover uses so if you don't have any tweezers you are going to struggle with this job because you do really need them okay i think that's pretty good let's get the cover as i said with the cover there is a hole on the underneath as well as down the end so you could run the cables maybe out of here then across and down so say with the recovery truck i think these lights fit in the back so then you may be better off coming through the middle and actually out through the body rather than through here because i think they fit into like a square chamber either side of the actual lighting unit so you can see here i've got to try and get this now this is obviously a little fiddly Get that to stay up out the way on the inside of here there is a little recess part there so that part there will actually sit flush on top of this tower so you can use this to get that out the way now if you can get that to sit clear and you can see that there's no real trapped wires That sits there, that sits there, so we get our two little screws. Whoops. It's tricky to do the best of times, and even tricky when you're trying to do it on camera. And another tip for you, if you're going this for the first time, put this cover on the back of the lens for this screw, which is actually a threaded screw to cut a thread into these posts rather than you having to cut them the first time. And with all screws that you're putting back into plastic, the best practice is place it in the hole, turn it the opposite way until you hear or feel the screwdriver, the screw drop like that into the threads, which will go back into the same thread holes. So then when you screw, you're screwing the thread back into the original holes rather than winding another one. Which is not a problem, but if you do it there's several times on a screw, end up winding a thread in each time and um, you'll end up with loose screws. Now you can see maybe I've done a mistake here because this doesn't appear to be sitting completely flat on this side. So let's just check this. I'm hoping that it's just that little screw I don't know if you can see here I'm just using my tweezers to try and manipulate these wires down there you go you can see there was some pressure on there so now we should have that aligned on there now just for the sake, because I said I've never done these before and this is the first time we're doing this and we're doing this together. Let's just take the other side off to make sure we haven't crushed the, the wire, which we have a little bit. Maybe what we do is we get that a twist to make it a little fatter. That looks better. See, 
I did actually squash this little grey wire a little bit. just about see down this hole here if there was any cables in the way so you can see that that should sit flush all the way around Looks like we're okay. Hopefully when we do the next side it will have a bit of better practice of it. And again, when you're putting your screw in, turn it back until you feel it drop. And that way you should be able to return it. And you can see I'm only using the blade of my screwdriver, not even the handle. If there's a nice clean thread in there, they should just fall back into their original position. As I said, they come with very long wires. My mat, I don't know if you can see, is 27 centimeters. So, we just do a little quick run so you can see. So, from the light unit, that's 27 to there. That's another 27, and they have a little tape there to keep them together. So, that's another 27 there. So, and there's another 27. So 327, smash and not great, but there you go. And then you've got that extra 13 there. So if you take those 30 off and put them onto there, you're looking at a good 90 centimeters. So they are reasonably long. So we've done the lights into here. Now obviously you can tape these, come around, but as you can see, these parts here screw on here. This is for the logger. I have these come through. So you could bring that wire up through that hole there, which then brings it along the bracket on the back of the logger. So we won't need this part for a while. Now we have the challenge of making these diffusers. So let's fold this up so we can see what's going on here. So the instruction says, align the black insulation with the holes and affix with some glue, which we've done. Place the LED board on the back and check the position of the LEDs starting from the back LEDs in the corner of the holes, then fix with a bit of super glue, I've just used the original panel, lay the supply lines according to the picture. So as you can see, if we look down here, the little LEDs are all in their respective holes. Now I don't I mean, I could go back and put a bit of super glue on that to align it by all means, but I don't think we're going to suffer with it falling out. So, use tweezers. So, roughly cut the black separating strip and insert into the two plexiglass diffusers with the slits. Then cut the strips so two millimeters stick out. The separator black strip. Um, the separator strips later stick into the holes. So what I've taken from that, so if we look at our picture, we have our diffuser strips here. We're looking at using this part. Yeah, and we'll also be looking at these parts here. Because we'll end up using that with the bit sticking out which goes up through the middle of there and into here so as I say they are just sellotaped onto the back of here so rather than dig them out let's just pull the tape off and there you go we have one we won't need that part just yet because that goes in to 
towards the end. What we will need is a piece of this material here. Now they give you some of the right width, but if you manage to lose this, you could obviously cut some more strips off this off cuts of material. reasonably attached in places. Just give this a little tweak. Now we only need to do one of these. Well we need to put one in here as in this part here. So that's that there and we need to put one In the middle of here. Now there is, you can see that there is a very small slot that goes from there. So let's just, for the sake of it, cut this material in half. And it says to place some in here. So looking at it here. The silver backing is on this side and it's clear that side. so I believe they're showing it this way in the diagram that little bit there fits in there it's a um, incredibly tight fit So the other part we need are one of these. So again, we can peel the tape off. As you can see, once you peel the tape, they just fall out. It's quite nice. It's got a um, frosted effect on one side, on both sides actually, then nice clear all the way through. So the other one's a bit tight, so let me try this one. Uh, using an off cut of this material. I don't know if you can see there actually is a slot there and there. So we do have, excuse my blade being dirty, I didn't get a new one. There is one there and there. This side does feel tighter than that side so Get this part and see if we can get it to go in here. Now that's um, incredibly tight. Now I don't know if you can see on this plastic where it come out of there, there is a ridge on here. So what I'm going to do is see if I can just Scrape that ridge off. Now these parts are only literally to separate these two chambers, so if they end up with a slightly rough appearance, I don't think it's going to affect the lights at all in how they operate. So now we have that trimmed. Let's see if we can get any more joy. I don't want to force this into here because, oops, but that looks like it's gone in a good two mil, two, three mil, and certainly on the instructions they say over here. You do 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 inserts as well. Conicals that may fit in any one direction. Use the tweezers to fit the post into the conical note. So roughly cut the black separating strip and insert into the two plexiglass diffusers with slits. Then cut the strips so two millimeters stick out. So I'm guessing you need two millimeters sticking in to give you some room to stick out. So we need a piece of this sticking out here and here. So what I'm going to do. 
Let's cut this again in half. Like so. This is where you need your tweezers. I'm going to give this a little scrape along here. Oops. Now we only need to scrape enough for it to insert. But the two parts will insert together, so I don't know if you can see on this part here. This part, once it's got the plastic and it's sticking out, it actually goes up through the middle of the black part. So let's just get rid of this clear lens over there. So we've got this. I can hold this with my tweezers and insert this into here. Yep. Okay, while we have in the tweezers, let's do a bit more shading. Laid along the edge here. I think it might be that they are slightly too wide still. So say where the moulding, where the guillotine cut it on the piece. Guillotines wear eventually and end up with less precision on your parts. So, if you can see this, I'm trying to hold this as tight as I can with my tweezers and insert it into there and I've just bent the piece of plastic so I'm glad they give you that all that off sheet. No, yeah, it really does not want to go in there. Let's try this one, and again, I think we need it this way. Hmm, okay, I'm going to just pause the video here and go and struggle with this rather than having to try and struggle looking through a camera. Basically, I'm going to keep shaving this piece of plastic down small enough or use some more of the off cuts from here and I might cut some strip that's slightly thinner and just here it comes in this material is quite thick in relation to the groove they've given me so give me a minute and I'll be back in a sec